It's showtime. Hello and welcome to Musical Lyrical Lingo. We're your hosts, Tim and LJ. Today and every week, we will be talking musicals and specifically what they taught us. Yay, we're back! Hello, back again. Back again. Look who's back. Tell a friend. Yeah, keep telling your friends about <laughs> us. That would be really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh our, gosh. Our fan club grows. It's very exciting, though. Yeah. Very, very exciting. I love seeing who's like following us on the socials and then like getting to follow them back and having we conversations and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And you know what I was also thinking? Make sure you listen to our playlist as well because yeah. it's really useful sometimes. Um, that's our playlist on Spotify if you have a, if if you have Spotify because uh, it's really useful. Um, sometimes to listen to the tracks that yeah. we've talked about and you i think the musical lyric lingo sometimes make a wee bit more sense as well yeah there's actually two because i think we exceeded our list in our first playlist holy moly is yeah. there yeah. yeah no i was on a wee bit of a road trip um last week and i decided i was like it? yeah no i did i was like Love what it. playlist uh, will i listen to because sometimes when you've got too much of a, a choice I really struggled to make a decision. I, I, so I, I was faffing about and couldn't decide. And I went, you know what? I'll just listen to my musical, lyrical lingo playlist. And it uh, brought back all those lovely... Um, discussions. Discussions that we've had. Yeah. Yeah. What right, is so this? We've got episode a, 15? Yes, episode yeah. 15. We're... 15 episodes worth of musical uh, songs to listen to. Go check it out. Absolutely. Right. But before we get into that... I have a question to ask you. Yeah. Have you been to the gym yet? No, I okay. haven't. I, I knew you'd you'd mention that at some point. No, I haven't because I'm actually at 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 the time of recording, I'm in the middle of a youth project. So we're doing a production of Oliver and we've got two weeks to put it on. So we're day three of the process. And to be fair, We've got like every number in, in the show set, which is some going. So if I if you hear the snores halfway <laughs> through this episode, you'll just know it's that I've nodded off because I'm exhausted. And I was just saying to um, Lauren before we started recording, my body aches like I just think I'm a wee bit old at times. And I'm like, oh, uh, like. Need parts. to get to the gym then. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to hold you accountable for this. I'll let you off for these two weeks. God, I knew I made a mistake well, to you about that. I mean, you've got till September. Yeah, do apologise. It took up about like five minutes of the last <laughs> podcast talking about my gym going habits. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> And this week we have no real dates and we have no real, like, because we got very, you know, well, I got very confused about our, which, when are we going to talk about this one? And when are we going to talk about this one? What, dates of? Of, what our, of the musicals. The, oh, the yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, 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 oh, the order in which yeah. we're doing them. Yeah, we're back to, back to the <laughs> normal setup of, we're just talking about one yes. musical this week, because clearly three last week was just too much for us to handle, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we had a bit of a domestic. It's okay. Yeah, we, we got through it. We're on talking ter talking <laughs> terms again. Last week's episode was done through gritted teeth. Did you oh, notice? No, no I'm wasn't. joking. No, um, it wasn't. No, we're not like that. We just get yeah. over ourselves and move on pretty quickly, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Shall we get going with this week's musical then, Lauren? Yeah. What What are we doing this week? We are going to talk about Matilda. Oh, lovely yeah. Matilda. It's yeah. a good one. It's It's sublime. Yeah. Yeah, I love how you always use that word. Do I say sublime? Yeah, you say it quite a lot. Oh, have I said that every musical that we've... Pretty much, uh, yeah. No, well... Yeah, that, that's yeah. a real favourite word of yours. I, you probably don't realise. I, do, I wouldn't have realised that that was yeah. my, like... Sublime. Adjective of choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, but it is sublime. Sublime, I would stand over. What other musicals have I said are sublime? 
Um, I'm pretty sure all 14. <laughs> oh, I haven't said all 14. No, because <laughs> no, I haven't joking. felt that way about all 14 of I'm the musicals joking. we've discussed. I'm but joking. I think for a, a modern musical, mm. it's really excellent. Like, it, it's done modern musicals really well. Oh, yeah, really has. So shall I talk a little bit about it? Tell us about okay. Matilda. So music and lyrics are by the wonderful Tim Mitchin. Minchin. Min, that's what I said. You said min, Minchin. I didn't. I said Minchin. Oh, sorry. You see, I'm, uh, I'm not. Maybe in the I room. didn't. Okay, maybe I was. Well, right. we'll certainly be listening oh, back no. and seeing yeah. what you said. Okay. Um, <laughs> Minchin. Minchin. Yeah. Yeah. And book by Dennis Kelly. Uh, based on the Roald Dahl, I can never say that, but I said that. You did. Roald it. Dahl novel, uh, which was published in 1988. <gasps> so. Um, it has it takes the same sort of story. So if anybody has read Matilda, they'll know the musical. Uh, musical was um, set in, or sorry, not set, but uh, 2010 was when it first started. It won seven Olivier Awards mm. in 2012. Um, and at that time was the most um, such awards ever by a single show. Yeah. And it actually has gone on to win 85 awards in total. Like throughout uh, across the world, Broadway, yeah. Oh wow, eighty five. Well, I it, that just stands with what I've just said about it. Mm-hmm. That it it is, it's it really really well written. Yeah, it is. Show like it's really really clever. And obviously the original source material is great. Well, that's the thing. And I think that's why I love it so much because I do remember as a child, I think it was the first book that really hooked me. Ah, oh, okay. I, I I understand kids who I have in my classroom who detest reading mm-hmm. and like getting them to open a book and read is like the hardest thing you could possibly yeah. ask them to do because I was that child. But, you know, when I was younger, like going through stage, uh, it's not stage school, going through primary school, even like big school, to be honest, I still like if you asked me to pick up a book and read it, I'd have gone, no, it's OK. I think I was too go, go, go yeah. as a kid that... Just sitting down to read a book, I could never like get immersed into mm. the, that world of what you were reading about until I read Roald Dahl's Matilda, and I absolutely he hooked me. So just Matilda in particular, not any other Roald Dahl books, because I really had a fascination with Roald Dahl whenever I was in primary school. Like The Twits is one of my favourite books. I think Matilda, for whatever reason, was the first Roald Dahl book I read. Ah, okay. And then I I did then go on to read, like, the rest of them. (laughs) Um, but, But even the rest of his books weren't as amazing as Matilda was. Like, I just adored the characters. And I, I adored his language, which I appreciated mm. in the rest of his books. But there was something about the, the plot and the story that I just, I absolutely loved it. And then the film at that time mm-hmm. came out, yeah. which was great. You know, and I loved that too, you know, with Danny DeVito and that girl who I can't remember the name yeah. who played Matilda. But then she was she was also in um, Mrs. Doubtfire, That's wasn't right. she? And yeah. I loved Mrs. Doubtfire yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I, I do remember it. It being the first book that really, like, um, captured, ca- captured me yeah. as a kid. Yeah. No, it's great, and I I love this the story of Matilda. I suppose is how I suppose if you if you grow up grow up in a in a house, um, which is maybe not the nicest to be in, you yeah. know, and you maybe have a, a, ch- a challenging relationship with parents, um, you know, it's it's maybe not like a like a wonderful book to read, but I think the the way Matilda has hope and like really fights to change her story mm. and all of that i think yeah i suppose as a child it captures you to be like i can be whatever i want if i put my own mind to it well yeah that's the thing like it puts children front and center mm. doesn't it in in the in the book as the show as does the show you know yeah. it really champions kids and nothing is impossible to a child do you yeah. know, that's kind of one of the messages it sends out. Yeah, no, I absolutely loved the book. Yeah. And I loved the musical when I saw it. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's great, I think. Um, so for those that maybe don't know the plots about Matilda, and she's the youngest child of the Worm, Wormwood family, um, but they don't love her, they don't respect her, they don't want her. Um, and it, it turns out, you know, she's a very special, clever child, you know, and she finds um, love and solitude, is that the right word? Yeah. In uh, books, 
yep. you know, and then she gets to go to school um, and she meets the lovely Miss Honey. But unfortunately at the school is also um, the complete opposite of Miss Honey, which is Miss Trunchbull. And she's just evil and hateful yeah. and, you know, but it's just through Matilda's determination and uh, figuring out that, you know, life doesn't have to be this hard. You know, if we all band together, we can make yeah. it better and, and they not, do, they succeed in the end. And not to sit back and yeah. let let people walk over you or let people treat you unfairly. Like, mm-hmm. I think that's that it, that's what's so cool about it, that a, a child as young as, she, as Matilda yeah. actually stands up to adults who are, maybe aren't being very nice or aren't, aren't doing honourable or... Yeah fair things yeah. yeah i thought yeah go you go girl and i suppose whenever you read matilda because it is obviously written for children it's the first time where you're pro and it's, it does come about uh, pretty much in most of his books that adults aren't always nice people absolutely yeah you know and i suppose if you do grow up in a very safe environment then that can be quite hard to understand. But mm-hmm. it's a real life lesson that don't just trust somebody because they're an adult. You know, yeah. they might not always have your best interest in heart. So yeah, you do have to, you know, make the best out of your situation and yeah. and, and be She's a good a person. very special girl. Yeah. Yeah. She's fab. Brilliant. Shall we get going on our musical lyrical lingos? Yeah, let's go. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. So in the... The opening song called Miracle, mm-hmm. which talks about how every baby born is a miracle of some, you know, of, of some sort. It says special, one of the lines says specialness seems de rigueur. So D-E and then R-I-G-U-E-R. Must okay. be a wee foreign language of some sort. Uh, and it means uh, in fashion or fashionable. Oh, so specialness seems fashionable or vogueish. It's it required by etiquette or current fashion. Oh, I didn't understand that. I still don't really understand. Well, it. To be special is like everybody wants to be. Everybody spe- wants yeah. to be special. That's what it is, okay. isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think actually, on the uh, before we even get into musical lyrical lingos, I think. It's, in my opinion, Matilda and Tim Minchin's work is probably some of the best lyrics I've ever heard in musical theatre songs. Yeah. Um, And you'll probably see as we go through this episode, like so many of of the... um, my musical lyrical lingos are just down to the vocabulary that Tim Minchin has has used. Do you know know what I mean? He's wonderful. Like, I... was introduced to him before he had written Matilda. Do you remember he was sort of like, he was just this comedian at yes. a piano? Yeah, you see, I didn't. I was the opposite, okay. so I'd never heard of this guy before. Right. Then the musical came out, I listened to it, and I was like, oh my goodness, that's so, like, so, all of the songs are so wordy and mm-hmm. so filled with these really intelligent rhymes and, and you know, vocabulary that he's used. And then I, I find loads of funny videos of him yeah. and his funny songs yeah. that he wrote on YouTube then. So then you, it's a bit like the YouTube hole. You get, like, yeah. you fall down those holes, don't you? And you, like, disappear for weeks just, like, watching as many videos yeah. of whatever it is yeah no yeah. i didn't know him at all no so I, I whenever i first heard that matilda was a music on he was the one that had written that first of all i was like oh my gosh he wrote the lyrics <laughs> and the music for a musical yeah. you know um and, and did you like, think that wow. would be a good thing or a bad thing no, like, I thought it was a good thing but I, okay I, I also was a bit confused because it's rsc royal shakespeare company yeah who sort of funded and created like you know I was like oh I couldn't quite get my head around how it was going to be a musical with him attached to it yeah the how that partnership would work yes yeah yeah. but he's just so clever and so oh he's he's mesmerizing to watch yeah like I've seen him in Jesus Christ Superstar and he was amazing well that's the thing I I, and I think he kind of came to this also because he had a love of musical theater himself which you wouldn't have necessarily have thought for for a comedian who like did you know silly songs um but yeah his language and his (laughs) understanding of vocabulary must just swallow a dictionary like insane like insane you could literally 
do multiple literacy lessons just on mm-hmm. on on his lyrics. Um, so another one yep. uh, in Miracle, uh, another line he used was, uh, it is some modern miracle of calculus. I didn't know what that word calculus meant, C-A-L-C-U-L-U-S, mm-hmm. and it's mathematical study of change. Yeah, the only reason I know calculus is because in America they study, they, no, definitely not, is they study study some of their subjects separately so how we would if we were doing like double award science Mm -hmm. or you would do chemistry physics i don't know i did single biology biology yeah they always say i've got calculus in like tv programs oh okay so So you knew that from american tv American TV. there you go well you see i didn't know what calculus calculus was then he also says you can be all cynical but it's a uh it's a truth empirical Oh, I have no idea what that means. Yeah, and empirical is means to observe is something that is observed or seen or is factual and real. Oh, yeah. So it's based on um, a verifiable observation or experience. So something that you have seen. Oh, to be true. You know, you have seen or seen it or observed it to be true. So. You can be, so basically that lyric saying you can be as cynical as you want. Yeah. But it's been seen. It's, it's, it's real. Oh, yeah, that's clever. Like, that's what I mean. This man is just a genius with his words. Yeah. And then the last one from that song is, uh, the, the mum. So like, I, I also love songs like this where there's a bit of singing and then it it segues into like a wee tiny scene yes. and then the song starts up again so in the middle of miracle you then visit matilda's mum who's just had matilda yeah. and she's in her hospital gown she's not at all happy because she wanted to be she didn't want to be there having her daughter <laughs> she wanted to be at like a dance com- contest That's you right. know what i mean like competing for some trophy um so she's raging and she's she's saying i uh, don't want to be here uh not dressed in hospital cotton with a smarting front bottom ah. i also think <laughs> the fact that he used smarting front bottom to obviously refer to what we all know he's referring to yeah. is hilarious yeah. but i didn't know that that word smarting mm-hmm. actually means a sensation uh, or feeling of a sharp, stingy pain. Oh, which on... is labour. Yeah, well, listen, <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about. I do. But, like, smarting is that, like, tingly, sharp that pain. That is such a good way to describe, describe it. it. That... There you go. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's some of my musical lyrical lingos for just one song. I do have more, but you want to give me some of yours? Yeah, well, I have one from Miracle. It's just, if you are to look at it, it it, it spells out the alphabet from A to Z. Oh, the school song. Yeah. So is that not in, is that not in Miracle? No. I, okay. I think that's the school song. The school, right. That's okay. So just, that's all I've said is cl- clever lyrics. Everything yeah. that he has written is done with purpose. It's not just, oh, this word rhymes with this word, so we'll put it in. There's clever lyrics yeah. throughout. So the school song is when the lovely, the lovely wee, like tiny, cute, innocent children who you meet in the first yes, scene sorry, in Miracle right. then go to school for the first time and the older kids are kind of like scaring them a bit that's and bullying right. them. Yeah. And yeah, the, he Tim mentioned the genius, like through his lyrics, like does the whole alphabet. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. It's very, very, very clever. Um, how I long have... do you think it took him to like write that song? Probably not very long. That's the thing. Yeah, but I'd I... love to know that. I know. I actually didn't research any of you know to see like yeah. how long that project was because I knew like it started two thousand and ten, but then it was two thousand and eleven. Whenever there was like previews and stuff going, yeah. so yeah. there was a lot of workshopping for a year. A lot of workshopping, which is very Royal Shakespeare Company, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um. Gosh, I don't know. Maybe we could get him on and ask him. Could you imagine <laughs> if we could get Tim Minchin on? That would be a dream, wouldn't it? Oh my goodness. Let's work on it. Yeah. Let's, everybody, let's work on it. Anybody um, know Tim Minchin? <laughs> Drop a wee link. Would, that would Have you fun. heard this podcast? <laughs> um, okay, so a um, musical... Right, see, this is the, the trouble with it being really clever lyrics and yeah. the fact that he uses 
words which I do not say on a daily basis. Yeah. I am not going to be able to pronounce these. That's okay. But in the song Hammer that Miss Trunchbull sings, yeah. where she's talking about her, that everything was planned and she didn't, you know, she wasn't distracted and she didn't think about anything else. Yeah. She mentions a load of phrases and they're all in Latin. So yes. I learned, because we didn't do Latin in school. No, thank we goodness. We taught Latin. <laughs> um, and, uh, so I have no idea when people are like, oh, that's Latin. Oh, that's Latin. Yeah. So one thing she says is, habenot est magnitum. Magi- magitum. Magitum. Oh, see, you're very good. Only because I, I, I know the songs right, okay. to this musical quite well. Okay. And that means suitable is more. Yeah. Which I don't understand. Like, I think that you always have to go further. Does that, like, you know... Always. Suitable is Suitable more. Is more. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah. And then she, and she goes on, she says more of that. Yeah. Yeah, it was just all in Latin. And I was like, oh, well, I learned a bit of Latin. There's a lot of Latin. Uh, so magnet, that, what's that word again? Uh, Magatum? Magatum. 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 So that word means more. More. So you would see that quite a lot. So like in yeah. some people's family mottos. Whatever. Okay. So I kind of like that. Very good. Um, then that song Telly. Yeah. Which Mr. Wormwood sings. Because he thinks tell, watching telly is much more educational than reading a book. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I, I've never picked up a book. Isn't that what it is? Or yeah. your telly's taught me this. Which actually we could maybe turn telly into the song for the podcast. Yeah, could do. Yeah, How the podcast has taught our musicals have taught us more than books. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we could be so good. Let's could. let's change the lyrics. Let's do that. Yeah. Um. So he mentions bufferlies, bufferlies, which pretty much just means sitting on his butt. Oh right. Okay. <laughs> because whenever you look up anywhere, it's like, do you mean this word? Do you mean this word? So I think it is just a, is it like slang? For, yeah, like a yeah. slang for I'm just sitting on my butt. So he mentions loads and loads of authors like Mary Shelley, who wrote what? I'm yeah. testing you. Mary Shelley. Mary Shelley wrote Frankenstein. Yeah. I, I've already said, like, I wasn't a massive lover of books okay, yeah. and literacy. Um, and then we've got literacy. Shakespeare's mentioned, but then um, James Joyce is mentioned, and he's an Irish um, novelist, poet, and he's famous for The Dubliners. Um, and again, I can't say it, Ulysses, I think. Uh, U- U- L- Ulysses. Yeah, see, I love Greek, yeah. but I can't say any other yeah. words. But James Joyce contributed to the modernist avant-garde movement um, and is said to be one of the most influential and important writers of the 20th century. Oh, So just the fact that mentioning a guy like that yeah. in a song, which is, you know, just like meant to be really... All about books, telly. Yeah. yeah. You know, Not it's books. just yeah. clever. Yeah. And also in a musical that's based on a novel. Yeah. yeah. I know. And then clever. mentions Ian McEwan or McEwan, and again, he was a writer, um, and a couple of his films... He's a more modern writer, um, have actually been turned into films, um, which again is a little nod to, you know, Matilda was a book yeah, and then yeah, yeah. turned into film and now turned into, film. Turned into yeah, something else. Absolutely. So yeah. it's just all clever. A funny one I thought in Naughty, although it's it's just a joke, this one, yeah, uh, Matilda in the, the song Naughty sings about Cinderella mm-hmm. in the cellar. Her fairy godmother was only two thirds fairy. I was like, "What? What does that mean?" No, I, I, I mean it was just like a daft lyric. Oh, right, okay. Her fairy godmother was only two thirds of a two thirds of fer- fairy. Oh, nah, I don't believe it. Um, you've mentioned the school song. I had mm-hmm. the school song as well. Bruce and Bruce were all blessed. We've Bruce, Bruce Bog Trotter who ate all of the Trunchbull's cake, and then she made him eat mm-hmm. a whole cake again. Um. They, the kids then sing, like, as his cheerleaders, like, yeah. go on, go on, Bruce, you can eat the whole cake. Don't let her Bruce. win. Bruce! <laughs> um, they sing, you'll never again be subject to abuse for your immense caboose. I didn't know what a caboose was. And a caboose is uh, a slang word for butt as well, oh, or behind. okay. So there you go, a bit like your, what was yours? Bafferla? Bafferlies. Bafferlies. Yeah, sitting on your bafferlies. That's yeah. yeah, that's the lyric in your song. Yeah. So I uh, yeah. People can talk about a huge caboose. 
which is a huge butt. Um, then The Smell of Rebellion, which I think is one of my favourite songs oh. in the whole show. Um, the Trunchbull sings it about her, the maggots yeah. that are the children in her school. Um, there was a few in this, actually. Um, she sings, And you may bet your britches. This headmistress finds this foul odiferousness wholly olfactorily insulting. Like, just, like, uh-huh. listen to those words. So, um, odiferousness. I didn't understand. Um, And odiferousness is having or giving off a smell, which is especially an unpleasant one. Oh, okay. And then, uh, so it's, she says, finds this far low differousness, wholly olfactorily. So the word olfactorily is connected with the the ability to smell. Oh, okay. So clever. Yeah, like oh, so clever. Yeah. So he's saying like this um, unpleasant, giving off this unpleasant smell is then um, the fact of having that ability to smell is offensive. So like he's, he's so clever. She, he then also wrote a line in the same song um, and it won't be long before I smell the pong of aiding and abetting. Yes. So I... Aiding is to provide support and assistance mm-hmm. to someone. I wasn't overly sure of what abetting actually means. Mm-hmm. It's like one of those words in life that you hear yes. thrown in every so and often. And I'm like, what, what is that? Like, They're always eating and abetting. Yeah, so abetting is to encourage someone else to commit a crime. Mm. So that's why, because I would never be no. doing that. So no. that's maybe why I didn't really know what that um, phrase meant. Then... I don't know. We maybe need to test this one out for the podcast. But she sings a line in the same song, which says, just like a rotten egg floats to the top of a bucket of water. So she's comparing children to a rotten egg. But I want to find out. I want to know, do rotten eggs actually float to the top of a bucket? Yeah, that's how you test if your eggs are out of date. Seriously. Oh my gosh, Timothy. Seriously. How have you got through life and you do not know that? Because for a very long time, I wouldn't have really eaten eggs. What? Um, yeah, like I'm, I, love I am eggs. so weird, right? So as a kid, the only eggs I would have liked were scrambled eggs because it was all mixed up together, right? I had this opinion that I didn't like the yolk. I didn't like the yolk of the egg. So in a fry, for years and years and years, I can't believe we're talking about this. The tangents we go off on in this podcast are hilarious. So for years, I would have got a fry and I would have cut around the the, the, the yolk, yolk, making sure it didn't break the yolk. Because honestly, if the yolk broke and spilled onto my plate, it was the end of the world. Well, why did you not just ask for a hard... Like, no, because even worse, because I don't like the like the hard chalky chalky yolk. Oh my uh, gosh. No, so I would have eaten the white of an egg right. and left the yolk. And now there's nothing that makes me happier than a poached egg with yeah. a runny yolk. Like it is delicious. I was say, I'm pretty sure you like a poached egg. So I that's why I was love poached eggs. But literally, that's only became that's only become a love of mine in the last four or five years. Until then, I was adamant that I did not like the yolk of an egg. So I wouldn't know yeah. that rotten so eggs have, float to the so top of a... I wouldn't be one. No, please, if anybody, if I ever serve food to people, I always make sure <laughs> that it is in date. But I would listen... She's telling me this now. She has fed me no. several times. <laughs> listen, I mean, if it's chicken or something like that, I'm not going to serve it to you if it is well past its date. I would always, like the day before, I'm never really going to cook it on the day. Either. Yeah. Okay, that would be it. But most things, if it says best before... I'm still serving it to you. Yeah, good for you. That's the way it should be. Yeah, okay. So there's certain things I wouldn't. But with eggs, the the date on them isn't always the mm. date. You can maybe get away with a couple of days after them. Okay. Um, But if you want to make sure you put them in water and if they go on their side, then it's like just a few days out of date. And if they rise, then it means that you can't eat them. They're bad because the, the, the gases in the egg is being released. I... Didn't know. I promise you, yeah. I didn't know that. So, so now I know. Or, or my brother, or Adam, would be li- like that. You see, if it's like a day out of date, he would bin, yeah. bin the food. Caitlin would do the same. And I, uh, to me, that's a real waste. Aaron's yeah. really funny. Like I have food poisoned him a few times, but that was. <laughs> 
but not like not actually with real food like with hot chocolate that was out of date like maybe four years or something like that oh, no. but only like whenever we were boyfriend and girlfriend and it wasn't my house it was my parents house is, so really it's is not, the horlicks is the horlicks, yeah, the horlicks is fine. okay good um phew no um so yeah, and plus, do you know, I think, I don't really think that was out of date stuff. I think it was because he can't have milk and it was just too milky. Oh, okay, got you. So I'm Well, that's all what that you're back. saying, aren't you? <laughs> uh, and, and you're sticking to it. And then the last, the last musical lyric, Alingle, the last big word mm. for the episode um, in The Smell of Rebellion still. Yeah, we're still in that song because they're just full. Mm-hmm. They're just full of really clever big words. Um, she sings the reek of insubordination. Oh, and yeah. yeah, I love that phrase yeah. and like the musical phrasing, phrasing of it as well. Uh, insubordination is a defiance of authority or refusal to obey orders. Yeah. So that fits in quite well with the children in her school because they're fits like... Fits in quite well with toddlers or... Really? Yeah. They, they're all just a bit insubordinate. Yeah, especially at that age when they're testing everything. So yeah, you would, you know, I think maybe a few comments maybe, you know, and you're raising kids and maybe from the older generation oh they're quite in you know you know they'd say it like in passing so yeah I knew that word. <laughs> there you go yeah. they were quite wordy musical I lyrical know, lingos this I know, week you had some really good ones there yeah. i think just because big words kind of make me go Ooh. also it is going to be my next school show Oh, so is it? recently I've been really looking at it mm. with a big magnifying glass. Now it's not till next year, but yeah. I always just start a wee bit early to go right. How could I yeah. actually do this? Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, I have I have been looking at it, and a few of those words came up because obviously when you're doing it, like you, you want to. to of, yeah. It's a bit like um, youth project at the moment. Like even today in rehearsals, there were a few lyrics that came up that we were having to explain to the kids so that they understand mm-hmm. what they're performing but I'll save them for a couple yeah. of episodes time because we're actually doing that musical so yeah um but yeah no so ah. when I was looking through Matilda's um script and stuff like that I was like oh that's a word that we're just going to need to make sure we're on, on top of and we know what it actually means yeah so that's one connection any other connections um uh, n- not I've done we've done We've done a few we like um, sections of mm-hmm. it in a couple of stagical shows actually because way 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 back when it first opened in London we we kind of did a, se- a mm-hmm. se- section in um, stage school um, and then we did it more recently again just but but before the re you know the yeah. release of the the, the up to date. Um, film. So I've done it a few times. I love, it's probably one of my favourite um, numbers I've ever choreographed with children. I loved choreographing Revolting Children. Mm. I'd like, we had a ball doing it. Like I, it's just one of those anthem songs that comes right at the end of the the show when they have overturned the tyrant that is the trunch bill and she's kind of gone running with her tail between her yeah. legs and they've kind of taken over the school and their re- revolution has worked. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved choreographing it. Um, I also love when we did um, the song Naughty. Mm-hmm. We did it with four mm-hmm. Matildas because I think I had seen it um, done like during like a, a West End live yeah. event or something like that. And I thought that's really lovely. And when you're teaching in a stage school, it's nice to give as many kids an opportunity mm-hmm. and rather than just giving it to one, yep. you know, we went, let's split it between four and they did that number and they did all their own wee bits. And the last time we did it, your yeah. your daughter was one of the Matildas yeah. and a fabulous Matilda she was too. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's my connections with it is that, through, um, whenever you first did it in stage school, it w- sh- would have probably have been that 2012, th- 2013, probably. Uh, yeah, it wasn't long after I it had opened. I think it was opened. about 2013. I think I was pregnant with Ethan. So he's August and yeah. so she's, shows are usually June. Yeah. And I, where you were performing it, I was working mm-hmm. at the time. And I remember standing at the back um, of the hall and watching it. So definitely had Charlotte and 
the girls doing naughty. Yeah. Um, I'm going. That's going to be Charlotte one day. <gasps> Seriously. I swear on my oh. life. That's going to be Charlotte one day. Um, and I found it really emotional. It is, I think. You know, I remember because I was quite emotional. heavily pregnant. And but that I found will it, have helped. Um, yeah, with I the found emotions. it quite em- emotional. And, um, and then she went and, and, and she did it. And she did it at a time where she would have really struggled to have got on stage yeah. and, and done yeah. that. And the fact that she did it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, so much so that I wanted her to do it for her grade three musical. Yeah. Um, and she did. So she Good sang girl. that along with another one. And I, I've told her she can retire it now because, yeah. I, I, you know, she's kind of done it. She's, she's really built up her, her confidence yes. over the last number of years, which is amazing. But yeah, that was class. Just thinking so many years ago, she's going to do that. And then she That's ends up so special. That's doing it. The first time you, yeah. you heard it, you went, that'll be yeah. my wee girl someday. And it, it came true. It yeah. was for real. And, and I don't think I've ever said that to anybody. No. Well, you, have, you know, certainly like, haven't like told wasn't, me wasn't outside of this why, podcast. Um, she was in it or anything. I just no, remember gosh, standing no, yeah. there as, yeah, as a mum being like, oh, wow, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, we didn't hang around because I think when it, it first came out, the the soundtrack just got me mm-hmm. immediately. Like, how could it not? Yeah. And anybody who's listening who hasn't listened to the cast recording of Matilda, either the the West End one mm-hmm. that came first, because then it went to Broadway yeah. after um, it was in the West End. Both soundtracks are fantastic. I think the American one gives you a wee bit more. Mm. It kind of gives you a few of the in between musical yes, moments yeah um but it's it's just go and listen to it if you haven't listened to it because it, it is so the songs are so catchy so brilliantly written the lyrics are absolutely genius as we've mentioned repeatedly um that we were like no let's do a few yeah. of these numbers are so good absolutely um, and, and i then, suppose if you're doing a stage go and it's children it's a, it's, it's you know, perfect. and it's not your typical Annie or Oliver. You know, it's a perfect one. There's nothing one. more exciting than seeing like a hundred odd children mm-hmm. doing a revolt in children as a as, as a showcase finale number. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And they love doing it. Like yeah. that's the thing. Like the kid, it's pro. That's why I'm so excited about doing it in school next mm. year because I think a show that involves juveniles, like I, it has to be up there with one of the best because. It's just so much fun. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're getting to do what they they want to do in real life, yeah. which is be cheeky mean, and yeah. naughty and, <laughs> yeah. you know, stand up to yeah. adults. And, you know, so I am so looking forward to doing it next year. I think our kids will absolutely love it. And certainly the last couple of times we've done in stage school, yeah. the groups involved had a ball yeah. doing it. Yeah. I also remember when I did see it in London uh-huh. and just how... how phenomenal it was and there's certain parts of the show well first of all the set is insane it's like it it kind of looks like it's been made up of like scrabble pieces of just letters which just encompasses the whole set and it's it's so class and I remember sitting pre-show which can sometimes be a bit boring because all you want is for the show to start Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean like and you know you'd have been brought like 45 minutes before curtain up just to make sure we got, uh-huh. this, got yeah. into our seat. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You're like going, I'm so bored. I yeah. just wanted to start. Um, but that set was really cool because it was open. There was no curtain or anything. Mm, I love that. And I just remember sitting, looking and like making loads of words out of the, the Scrabble pieces that were on the set, which is exactly what the z- designer probably wanted the, the audience members to do. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I just thought, Oh, this is so clever. Yeah. Like, even the set design is an absolute work of art and is genius. Um, and I also remember, like, how they did Amanda Thripp's bit, you oh, know. So it. the trunch bull picks this girl up by the pink tails and swings her around and then throws her and she lands over the fence and all the rest of it. Uh, and they did it on stage and you saw this Amanda Thripp, like, like, being turned like she was like the hammer mm-hmm. in the Olympics 
and then you saw her throwing. But then she just disappeared and you were like, where where did she go? And then and then obviously a dummy then fell, dropped from the ceiling somewhere into the auditorium, like into the aisle. Wow. And the kids came rushing down off the stage and like encompassed mm-hmm. the 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 dummy. And out of this then huddle of kids was Amanda, was the the uh, the, the kid yeah. who had played Amanda. And I was like, how did she get from the stage being swung around? Because it, w- it was her on stage yeah. that was being swung, whatever wires yeah. they used or whatever. I don't know how they did it. To then being in the auditorium, like in amongst yeah. the audience members. So clever. So seamless, so fantastic. So I'm going... How the flip do I do that in my school mm. hall next year? Because do you know what I mean? Like, I want to do that. Like, I want it to be happen like that. You better get on it now. I know. Well, that's why I've been looking at it. <laughs> it's only July and the show is not until next April, Lauren. But I've already started looking at it. Yeah. Well, here, I have some fun facts. Oh, cool. About sort of this, this set design. Oh, brilliant. So, uh, the production uses 8,320 balloons a year. <gasps> Wow. Oh, yeah, because that opening scene is like almost like a birthday party. Yeah. My mummy says, I'm a miracle. And then the blackboard that moves, so the blackboard sort of moves to represent the the school, doesn't it? The blackboard at the back. Yeah, and the blackboard also is where the message yes, like um, appears, like as if by magic. Yeah. Um, it moves 15.5 miles a year. Holy moly. Yeah, so the way that it... it um, where that it's done. There's 3,780 paper planes are thrown into the audience each year. Oh, the teacher in school that's in charge of props <laughs> is going to hate me because I want planes and I want, um, like, I want uh, paper 3, planes. 3,780 per year, so you'll need to work that out. How many Imagine shows? Imagine being on the props team I of know. that show. Yeah. You must absolutely hate paper planes. Mm. Definitely. Because I don't think those are the type of things that can be bought in. Like, you can't buy in a ready-made paper plane. Somebody is, some poor soul on the props or the stage team are sitting every, before every performance, yeah, making, making so many paper planes. Unless if I source it to some poor soul who will maybe, make it. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> yeah. Some nine-year-old, like my son, who <laughs> loves to make paper planes. You could make it. Well, some nine-year-old can make a decent amount of money if they <laughs> outsource that. Um, then there's a hundred tubs of chocolate spread used per year, that which would actually be... isn't a huge amount. I'm pretty sure we go through a hundred tubs. But imagine the house. poor kids that play Bruce, Bro- Bruce Bogtrotter, they must be put off chocolate spread yeah. for life if they're doing that, what, eight, eight times a week? Eight shows a week. Eight shows, although they've got probably got yeah. a couple of sets of yeah. kids, but still like... yeah. So, and then the last one, which I just found really cool, is the school bell that is used, the sound of the school Mm -hmm. bell, is um, the Royal Shakespeare Company's front of house staff bell, which they use in Stratford-upon-Avon. So it's a recording Oh, of the bell that the is bell used front that of house they there. Use front of house, isn't that Stratford lovely? Upon-Avon. And that's where it first opened, yeah. wasn't it? It opened yeah. in Stratford upon Avon and then moved to the West End. Yeah. yeah, very good. I have a few facts too. Oh. Um, um, we, I think we had talked about it um, briefly earlier um, in the podcast, but. It kind of went, like most shows, it kind of went through a process of workshopping Mm -hmm. and trials and changes were made creatively and things like that. And um, originally, right back to workshopping days, originally the children's parts were going to actually be paid by adults. It was just going to be an all adult cast. Yeah. uh, Until after the first couple of workshops when the creative team decided, no, actually... It needs needs to be kids playing the kids' role. But I also think that's something that's really clever about the show, how they... Because there are obviously adults Mm -hmm. in the cast too, but in things like um, Revolting Children and stuff like that, the adults are also kids, and the school song, the adults are also kids. But you do not notice. Like, it's so... They they mould the... the kid actors and the adult actors together so seamlessly mm. that you don't realise in Revolting Children, yeah. like half of them are children yeah. and the other half are adults. Like so, but it's, that's clever. Like that's so clever. 
choreography is well, just that's it. Choreography on. and I suppose making sure that your energy levels are matching. Yeah, you know. So yeah. I suppose it's all that creativity and that direction and the choreography. So yeah, that's it. And then in. Tim Minchin mm-hmm. also originally wrote a song called Magical, mm-hmm. and it was supposed to be for the scene where Matilda discovers her uh, telekinetic powers for the first time. Mm-hmm. I suppose we haven't even mentioned oh, yeah, that very suppose, much. Yeah. That she kind of. Has that it. was a thing, yeah, Matilda. And it kind of came about through anger or injustice or unfairness. And she kind of started doing, like, really cool things, mm-hmm. like getting chalk and the chalk drawn Closing on the doors. board and, and door slamming. And she she tilt, uh, topples the jug with the newt in it, isn't that right? Mm-hmm. And that's how the newt ends up down the Trunchbull's knickers. But, yeah, so he had written a song called uh, Magical, but then decided, actually, no, it was just a bit too Disney. Oh, okay. So then changed it, and that event, the the song Quiet, eventually Mm. took Magical's place. Okay. And Quiet's a great song. Yeah, that's my sound innovation. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Quiet or Naughty. Um, And also just Tim Mitchin, I just said, he's fantastically wonderful. Yeah. Um, But yeah, there's something about that song, Quiet. It is beautiful. It's stunning. And in a show that is go, 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 crazy, crazy, like big show numbers, lots of action, action packed outrageous over the top characters to then all of a sudden it's like everything stops and there's such a stillness and I remember when I saw it in London like you could have heard a pin drop in Mm. that auditorium the way it was built up and then it was like it was like someone had pulled the plug out and it just went and it was just her on the stage and she and the song in, in itself starts it starts like quiet and just builds and builds and builds and builds and builds. No, sorry. It starts massive yeah. and, and then, then she goes <sharp inhale> quiet. Yeah. 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 And I think as adults, we're not very good at doing that. We're not very good at taking those quiet moments. I think that's a massive mm. thing that people need to remember is take time for yourself. Take time. But kids are, you know, younger yeah. kids definitely are. They'll go into a corner. They'll, you know, they'll have their, their time. My kids are really good at it, which I yeah. am so proud of them for that they can go I need some me time or I need like yeah. time just to kind of process the day or whatever it is. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's... And it is, and that number, <laughs> I mean, I think that number really highlighted how powerful of an actress these young girls mm-hmm. who played Matilda had to be. Now, that probably sounds a bit stupid because Matilda carries the whole show. You know, and she's she's fantastic throughout, but there there was a sophistication, I think, to that number in particular. Mm. And musically, it is ridiculously difficult. Mm. Like I know it uh, it would it's been used quite a lot with a few uh, students that I would know for their like exams uh, yeah. of high grade. You know, and. It's it's difficult. Mm. Like it is difficult to sing, and like these are young. Like the the pressure mm-hmm. on these like young girls to like carry that song. Yeah, that song. It's so. Um, what's the word? It's so. Everything's so stripped away. You're you're so exposed. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Although, like the whole show is like to carry a show like Matilda on your your shoulders. So. That was also one of my stand innovations yeah. as well for those the kind of reasons that you mentioned, as was Tim mentioned, yeah. and as gen- just genius. But also, one of my stand innovations is the Trunchbull, I think. Mm-hmm. The Trunchbull is probably one of the trunch best. Trunchbull, is it not? No, Trunchbull. Are you sure? Yes, Trunchbull. Okay. Um, it's. I think the Trunchbull is one of the best. It's trunch ball. The trunch ball. It's not B A L L. Look up your book there. I'm pretty sure trunch it's trunch ball. See here we are arguing again, and you turn out to be right. No, you're probably right. I don't know. Why do you what? keep saying bull? It sounds weird. Trunch ball. Um, have I got it Miss wrong? Miss Trunch ball. T U 
at T R U N C H B U L L. Okay, thank I'm wrong you again. and good night. <laughs> okay, sorry. So I take it back. there'll be a wee advertisement <laughs> going on social media this week for a new uh, presenter or <laughs> new podcast. Shut up! <laughs> like, did you hear the scorn? She the, uh, the scornful tone. Why have I said trunch trunch ball? ball. Oh, for goodness sake, trunch Lauren. Bull. Um, cause she's like a bull in a tiny shop. I know, shop. I get it, but I always thought it was ball. But back to my original Sorry. point before you so rudely interrupted me with your scorn. Um, <laughs> like I was wrong again. <laughs> um, I think the trunch bull is one of the best villains ever written. Okay, so I think it's a bad part. It is, yeah. And I think it works as the male playing the female in the stage show. Uh-huh. Why do you think they changed it for the film? I have no idea. I think, me may- I think maybe because they got an actress of yeah. the caliber of Edmund Thompson and went, yes. I mean, it did. I agree with you. I think, I think it, it really works mm. so well in the musical that it is a man. Yeah. You know, um, dressed up as a as the character, um, I think it would also be really funny in school if it was a wee boy yeah. who who could do it. But it'll for me next year. I'll go to the person yeah, who's, who's gonna. So I'm gonna let it be open to boys or yeah. girls yeah. can go for this part because yeah. originally when it was first uh, done in. In the West End, it was a man who played the Trunchbull. So yep. if you think you could do a really awesome Trunchbull, you give it a go. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the way I'm going to go. Um, I love Emma Thompson. I think she did a good job of it. Mm-hmm. But I understand sometimes when you're when you're used to something yeah. and you know that that's the way it's being done, it it kind of jars sometimes yeah. when it's done something done differently. But yeah, I would I would love yeah. to get the trunch bill again. I could see that as your part, you know, the, oh, what's that word? Like, um... My retirement gig? No, 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 no. Like, as in, you would never expect it type thing. Do, do you know what I mean? Oh, really? You wouldn't yeah, think like, of in, me at casting yeah, wise? Yeah, you would never think of but me? But you would do it and you would do it, like, phenomenally, where oh, people would think. just be like, yes! Why I, did we not think about that? I would love to get, like, her like the Trunch Bulls Sorry. songs are class. Like you've got the hammer, yeah. you've got the smell of rebellion, you've got Fizz Ed, which I oh, love. Oh yes, Fizz. I always forget about that song. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. Discipline, discipline for children who want listening. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love yeah. it. And I think it's a class, class character. Yeah, that's they're all they're all pretty good. Oh yeah, but like give me Trunch Bill, give yeah. me a a, a wig. With you know a high bun, <laughs> love it. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to give, to give that a go. Like, yeah, it's a good musical. Really is. Highly recommend. Go listen on Spotify and or wherever. The, the 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 recent film of it is really excellent. I think they did a really good job of it too. And it's just been released. Yeah, hasn't it, just been. It's just um for. I think it's been in American mm-hmm. Netflix for a while. Because I was like, oh, why? Why? Because yeah. I went to see it in the cinema and loved it. And I was like, I can't wait to see it again. And then realized that it was being released yeah. basically in every other country. Uh, Netflix me, first. And like UK Netflix was the last on the list or something. But it's just been out. And then I we watched it in school at the end of term oh, there. You? Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is so good. Um, I love the bit in um, Revolting Children where they like dance down the corridors, but the choreography is just so class. And the school song behind the school da- the gates, what the way they're doing it, those are two moments to look out for. I think they're particularly fantastic. There we go. We heard it from Timothy. And that wee girl. Uh, in the that, red beret. That Dublin girl, the girl from... Oh, the girl who played... Uh, Matilda, who is originally from Dublin. You go, girl. I know. Out of how many children that um, must have auditioned for that role? Good on you, mm-hmm. Alicia. Alicia Weir, her name is. Yeah. She's she great. looks very like Matilda, how you picture in the books. Yeah. And I, 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 I have met her in real life oh. because um, I... 
went down to Dublin to help a, f- a friend out with some um, additions, mm-hmm. ki- kids additions for a show that was like a show that's done down at Christmas every year. And she she rocked in a couple of times and she was always bright eyed, yeah. sparky, you know, but yeah. Wow. She wouldn't know my, she wouldn't remember me, but I remember her. You never know. No, she wouldn't, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So. Oh, well, that was good. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy that musical and enjoy going through the lyrics and just realizing how, how clever he is. Yeah. Um, how wonderful. I mean, Lauren, well done you, because it was a great idea for a podcast to talk <laughs> about musical lyrics. Um because there, there are many shows that we have now looked at where the lyrics are just the unsung heroes often yeah. of, of I think musicals. That's it. And sometimes you just sing a song, whether it's a pop song, a musical song, whatever song it is, and you're just singing it. You're not understanding what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and this has really given us an opportunity to look at them in detail yeah. um, with fresh eyes, with new eyes, everything. Um and it's, yeah, it's fun. It's fun yeah. doing it together, though. It is, indeed. Mm. On to next week, then. Yeah, have you got a clue? Because we well, are going to be mad. We've kind of talked, we've kind of talked this week about a musical that, that was kind of carried by a juvenile, by a young mm. actress. Next week, we're looking at another musical, which is kind of led, like the leading player is a juvenile young boy. That was a good clue. Yeah. And we'll, I think just leave it there. Just leave it we to don't, shush, don't want to because you always um, <laughs> just kind of, you know, end up giving it away. There's the trunch bill bossing me about again. <laughs> I just we just leave it there. It's done. Okay. No need to go on. I'm saying no more. <laughs> Bye. Bye.